Good afternoon. I'm Brother James, your brother in Christ. And for all those who are haters, destroyers, and workers of Satan, you can just refer to me as nobody. I desire today to always allow to the Holy Spirit to lead me, guide me, and direct me. And what brings me here is I have a word for you today. And uh, I'll begin reading at the uh, first John, the fourth chapter and the fourth verse. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. That verse alone is a very powerful verse as you live and walk in Christ Jesus. It says, they are of the world, therefore speak they of the world. And the world heareth them. We are going through those times right now. We are of God. And he that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth us not. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God. And knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God. For God is love. And this was manifested the love of God towards us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Herein is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us. And his love is perfect in us. Hereby know that we dwelleth in him and he in us because he hath given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the savior of the world. And whosoever confess Jesus is the son of God. God dwelleth in him and he in God. There are two of you. As the scripture says, The earthly being deserves an earthly body. And the heavenly being deserves a heavenly body. 
and throughout all of God's creation. As we look through Genesis in the beginning, and it talks about God said, and it was so. And the things that please God. And he said, let us make man in our image. So that explains the earthly body. Zechariah 12, 1 tells us, the burden of the word of the Lord for Israel, saith the Lord, which stretcheth stretch forth the heavens and layeth out the foundations of the earth. That's in creation. But here is the most important thing of all, which brings to you the heavenly being and forms the spirit of man within himself. And so from there, we know that the earthly body was made first. And that was all made outside of God. But the spirit of man was made and taken from the inside of God, who God is. And when the Bible teaches us in Genesis that God breathed into the nostrils of man and he became a living soul. This is how God transformed himself, transferred himself right into this body that was made of dust and clay. And it said that man, who was formed from the dust of the earth, became a living soul. Oftentimes we go off and the spirit will tell us to do one thing. And the flesh will tell us to do something else. And this is the essence of what this battle between God and Satan is all about. In Judaism, they, they talk about something called tikkum olam. And in that, it talks about fixing, that translates into fixing that which is broken. Hello, son. God bless you. Fixing that which is broken is that the spirit of man that God pulled from within himself and breathed into the nostrils of man and gave him life. The spirit of man came right out of God and it is an immortal being. And all of us have been to funerals, so we know when, when the body lays dead, the spirit of man has gone back to heaven, if that was the calling, or to hell, if that's where the flesh won over victory over the spirit of man. We need to know which direction we're going. Because God loves you as his greatest creation. You are the true worshipers in the church that Christ has called you to. Keep your faith. Jesus said in John 10:34. As he was speaking to the Pharisees and those, Jesus answered and answered them and said, Is it not written 
in your law that I said, now we know he's the word, you are gods. If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came and the scriptures cannot be broken. But to be a God, you must be immortal. Now we know that if you're saved in Christ Jesus, the spirit of man goes to heaven. We also know that there is a resurrection of the body. And it too will be changed. But all those who go to hell, their, their spirit and their body will be with them. Oh, bless his name today. I am in my father. St. John 14 and 9. Yet a little while and the world will see me no more. But ye see me, because I live, and ye shall live also. At that day, ye shall know that I am in the Father, and ye are in me, and I in you. Christ. Christ Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. You see, the Bible tells us in Galatians that the flesh lusteth after the spirit. Lusteth after the spirit. But it does not say that the spirit lusted after the flesh. It says, and the spirit after the flesh. There's a war going on in there. The spirit of God that's in you is converting, trying to convert the soul, the, the, the earthly body into becoming heavenly. And the earthly body is trying to convert the soul into becoming earthly. And therefore the war goes on. And as long as the two walk together on this earth, the challenges of life, the challenge of eternity will be in you. For the Jesus said when he was going back to heaven, he said, the prince of this world is coming. And he said that uh, I have nothing in him. Oh, bless his name. And so we are at war in this body. And Ephesians 6 and 11 tells us, put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil and his fiery darts. It says that we don't wrestle with flesh and blood, in Ephesians 6, 11, and now verse 12, but we wrestle against principalities, which are the governments, the, 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 the laws and the countries each have laws that we must abide by. The magistrates, they're called. Do we always follow after the wrong laws, some do, some don't, some make a stand. Then there's the powers of superhumans. And then there's the rulers of darkness of this world, and that speaks directly of Satan. And against spiritual wickedness in high places, the earth is corrupt. Evil going on everywhere. 
But what's really important, the armor is important for Christians to wear. But above all, in verse 16, it says, taking on the shield of faith, wherein ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Those fiery darts are really something else. I was, 25 years ago, I went and I prayed for a man in 1996. And as I laid on hands on him, I could feel the darts sticking in the palm of my hand. But they didn't hurt because they didn't penetrate the armor. In 1997, uh, one of my colleagues asked me, he said, Brother James, I want you to go down to Madonna and pray for this man who fell off a roof. And I went down there and I talked quite a bit with him and, and he told me about his business and a $100,000 motorcycle he had ordered and now he won't be able to ride it. And, he had stitches from the top of his neck all the way down to his waistline. And he had stitches in the front of his chest down pretty low. And he, like the other man, they were both sitting in wheelchairs when I prayed for them. And he said to me, he said, about his business, he was making hundreds of thousand dollars a month and just putting roofs on and he fell off the roof. And so I told him, I said, my brother sent me to pray for you. And I prayed for him. And as I laid hands on him, he said to me, do you feel that? And I said to him, yes, I do. The fiery darts, he could feel me drawing on them and they were sticking me in my hands and I, I but they had no pain there. They were just like laying your hand on tops of hundreds of needles and never pushing pressure on it. And so I said to him, uh, I usually don't say anything when I pray unless someone says something to me. But let us go on with the fiery darts. We have a great authority over these fiery darts. Because I, back in 2018, I began to think about this and I, Looked over into Isaiah 53 and, and, and 5, and it talks about Jesus and how he was wounded for our transgressions. And he was bruised for our iniquity. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. That peace is important to these fiery darts. It says, with his stripes, we were healed. So I began to study on this peace thing. And you and I know that any time that we go into a situation where our peace is upset, our peace is broken, we're not walking around our homes, our jobs, our families and loved ones with this peace that Jesus speaks about. And he says, the peace that I give you, the world didn't give you, and the world can't take it away. And so I began to see that I said that, oh my, it's, it, it is covered here. But why do we go and have these, these pains coming in our body? Number one, we don't always walk around with our armor on. But the scripture is clear, and <coughs> Ephesians, when it says in verse 16, it says, above all, taking on the shield of faith, wherewith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench out the fiery dust. What is this shield of faith? It's talking about Christ in you and his word. You will never should be out without the word of Christ. You may sometimes be without your armor, but never without the word of Christ, which abideth in you. Oh, bless his name on today. The fiery darts. 
So I began to look at this scripture and it was in Matthew 16 and verse 19. And Jesus talks about, he says, I will give you unto you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Lord, help us now. And he says, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever ye shall bound loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. So I began to look at that scripture uh, as I was studying these, these fiery darts. And I, I said, well, I need the loose on earth women to speak the word. And I held on to that one for a little bit. And, and I began to look back at whatever I bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And one day I had a pain in my knee and it was right around my kneecap. And I said, I bind you, Satan, and cast you into hell and the lake of fire. Now, mind you, before uh, all of the years that I was praying, I was laying on, on by faith and casting out these demons. But when the Lord fed me, this scripture, Matthew 16 and 19. I began to understand what kind of power we have. You see, when God took, formed man within himself and then breathed into the nostrils of man, he didn't change nothing. He didn't take nothing away. For the gifts of God are without repentance. He doesn't want them back. You can be evil and still keep your gifts. You see what I'm saying? And so I start working on myself first. And, and I get a pain. And I, I said, Satan, I bind you in the name of Jesus and cast you into hell and the lake of fire. And I always add an amen to that. Oh, bless his name today. And so as I blessed his name, I, I get other pains in my body. And I say, Satan, I bind you in the name of Jesus and cast you into hell and the lake of fire. God bless you, sister-in-law. Good to see you. And so this scripture means so much more to me now that I, I went back to, to a funeral uh, I believe it was in August, I guess. And my stepdaughter had passed, and, and I, I began to look on this scripture there, you know. And, and I see things in a whole new light now as I've progressed from a five year old kin kindergartner. And I moved into a place where I would allow God to teach me from the dreams and the visions that I had from the time I was five years old. And I would meet him in P building in that closet and he would teach me from that point to 70 years later. And I'm 75 now, that journey was a long way. But the scriptures, they just open up because I was in 70 years of training to get where I'm at today. So here's what we need to do, and, 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 and I, I don't really like taking medication. Every time I get a chance to get off medication, I get off of it. But the word, you remember I said, we've got to keep our faith in the word. I'll give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. The word says, this is Jesus talking. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth, shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you shall loose on earth, shall be loose in heaven. Now he's given us the keys, the body of Christ, the keys of heaven. Huh. All we have to do is make our faith stronger. And these will work for every Christian on earth. Now you shouldn't be cursing your fellow man, you should be loving him. 
But this is for Satan. This is originally laid for Satan. And so when Jesus said, ask me anything, he said that I will do it for you that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Can you say amen? So then, I see this scripture here. It says, uh, John 14 and 13, whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And if ye shall, if ye love me and keep my commandments, oh, this, this gets so good. I will pray to the Father and he shall give you another comforter. Well, we know about him. That's the Holy Spirit. And the reason we jump and shout when the Holy Spirit comes is because the God that he breathed into the nostrils of man, that he became a living soul. It, it's, it's so excited to know that the Spirit is here. <clears throat> so then we are two. We are earthly man. And we are spirit man. Earthly man created from the dust of the earth, a spirit man formed right out of the innards of God and breathed into the nostrils of man. That's power. And that's something I don't like. I have power because I know this word. But knowing it is not enough, you have to live by it. And if you live by it, you are led by the Spirit. And God is able to keep his word to you. Your mother may not keep her word. Your father may not keep his word. Your siblings may not keep this, their words. But God, I can assure you, my family knows God. But now they have an opportunity to complete their walk with God. I asked the question, how far are you willing to go with God? Enoch, walk with him. Hmm. That's what we need to do. There are some Pharisees uh, and Sadducees around Jesus one day and, and they, he had silenced them and, and uh, they asked him and said, Master, what is the greatest commandment? And Jesus said, that you should love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy mind, and soul. This is the greatest commandment. And the second is like unto it. Love your neighbor as yourself. I uh, went last year, I had went to Time Warner to turn in a modem and I didn't have the modem. I, I didn't know I had to have the modem, but uh, anyhow, I went home and the next day I came back down. It's all in time, life is all about timing. And a young man from my one of my mentors church his son came in the door. <clears throat> now, had I had the modem on Monday, I wouldn't have met him on Tuesday. And I said to him when he walked in the door, how you doing? You know, he, he said, just a minute, I'll be over there. And so he come over and he said, will you go and pray for my dad? I said, what's wrong with him? He said, well, yesterday they put a stint in his leg. And today they're going to amputate his toe. I said, well, certainly I'll go, go and pray for him. He asked me if I would pray for him right there. I said, no. I said, I'm going over and be with him. And so I went over to be with him. And uh, I began to talk to him. And he said, well, they're going to do my amputation on my toe at 3.30. And I said to him, I said, uh, okay. Uh, so he called his son that was supposed to come over. This is a different son. And he said, 
<coughs> he finds out that they had changed to 5.30, and then he calls the son, he said, I, they're going to change my surgery to 5.30. And I said, uh, I'm, I'm looking at him, you know, and, uh, after after he got off the phone, I said, his son told him, he said, well, Dad, I can't make it. You know, I just can't make it. I can't get away. And so, because he'd already put in the leave at 3.30. And so, after he got off the phone, uh, he, he's one of my former pastors and mentors. And uh, uh, I said to him, I ain't going nowhere. I said, I'm going to be right here with you through all of this. And so when he, I had seen he was getting low because his, his family member wasn't there, you know, and, 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 and uh, my mother and father both knew him, you know, uh, they used to come and he'd let them preach in their, let my mother preach in the church and everything, you know, and bring the word for, to the women. And <clears throat> so anyhow, uh, I stayed there with him. I began to see that he was getting down, and I talked old times with him because I had known him for over 30 years. And, and we began to talk, and I pray with him. I talk with him. I pray with him. And finally, the nurses came in. It was, must have been about 4.30 or 5 o'clock, and they came in and said um, they were taking him down for his surgery. And so I, thought, I went on down with them, you know, and they put me in a special waiting room for people who were in surgery. And that's where they come and let you know what's going on and everything with the family member. They, they, they knew I was a friend of the family. But anyhow, when, it, when I got there and this went really smooth, that peace that Jesus talks about. We, we need that peace to walk in every day. We need to cover our children with prayer every day because the enemy is out there. And I told you earlier the, the, the different kingdoms of this world that we're up against every day. And so anyhow, I, I, the doctor came down and he talked with me and told me everything he had done and everything. And he, there's some he told me how far down he took the toe out. And so I began to get an understanding of all that was done. And I headed back up to the room. They said he wasn't going back up there, but he had beat me there. And so when I walked in the room and, and, and he said, he said, I told them, them being his family, that you are all right. And he did this to me. And so I felt such a joy for somebody other than myself. A joy that overwhelmed me so that I kept telling him, I said, I got to go to my church and give God the glory. And, 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 and his son had came in by, by then. His son was there. And I explained to his son what the doctor had told me about his toe and how deep the amputation was and everything. And I kept saying, I said, I got to go to my church and give God the glory. I go get my car off the third floor of the garage. And I head down. To the exit and I began to break down there and then God gave me an anointing for love that I never had before so I understand what this love thing is all about he said in uh, Zechariah 4 6 an angel came to Zerubbabel and he said to him can you read this? And Zerubbabel, he couldn't read, and he, so the angel read it to him. The scripture says, not by power, nor by might, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. This is about God's spirit winning this battle. And then in 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, at the very last verse. You know, the prior verses talks about your gifts and everything. 
and that all the, the powers that God has given us and this and that. And God don't take your gifts back. He don't want them. He's got an unlimited supply. But that last verse of scripture, Paul comes in and he says, let me show you a more excellent way. What is he showing you? First Corinthians chapter 13, love. The love chapter. Love is what this is all about. And God wants to have more sons. Now in creation, there were no women in the heavenly realm. And if you know your Bible, you know that that's why the demons went into the daughters of men. I'm going to close there. Hope to see you another time. And I still want 100 million people, Christians they have to be from all over the world, to pray for the war that's coming in 2030. On, on, on January the third week of 2017, I was recording in Time Warner uh, my church service and, and I began to dry weep. And as I dry weep, I said, Lord, what is this? You know, uh, I'm weeping but no tears. And the Lord said to me, he, he said, a billion people throughout the earth will die in 2030, World War III and World War IV. So I'm here to perfect the church and the things that it needs to know, but to also remake or make a request to 100 million people throughout the earth that are Christians to seek 2 Chronicles 7.14 and repent. God is not happy. 50 million aborted babies. They're not babies no more because the scripture says there will be no more days of infants dying. And as they transition from this world back to heaven, they all become 100 years old anyhow. There's no daycare in heaven. Your scripture tells you that about becoming 100 years old. How do I know? Well, 1990, my now ex-wife had a baby really early. And I prayed for her. I, my colleague, though, that just told you about his toe. He, he was a pastor and he was with me. And that was a long time ago, almost 30 years ago. And I prayed and I was at home and I built an altar in 1990. It sits about 10 feet away from me here. And I built that altar and at that altar, I constantly prayed. And as I was praying one day uh, or in my house, just I heard a cry out on the third day because she had transitioned into 100 years old by then. The things that, that, that you can't see are the things that are eternal. The Bible said, the things that you see, they are temporal. The things that you cannot see are eternal. Well, after she told me she loved me, I, I was content because I really covered her in prayer. So I do all of my children and my family members. So God bless you. God, keep you. Let's keep the faith. Be strong in your prayers.